Hello everybody, Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you live from Menasha, Wisconsin. I hope you guys have had a wonderful weekend. I had a really busy week this week. I am going to get you live on my screen here so I can make sure I try and monitor your comments really well. Let's see. Okay, for some reason my screen isn't resetting here. Hi Heather, hi Cindy. And I think it's because I'm just coming in there. Hi Julie, hi Francesca, Trudy, welcome. Okay, here we go. Michelle, Karen, Kathy. So, last week I went to Iowa for a few days. Um, I got to visit my friend Dina she's one of my besties and um, I was helping her out with a big project and then I also bought a new paper cutter and this is an industrial size paper cutter and it was so big that Steve went out to the car and thought he was gonna just pick it up and bring it in the house and he's like hey you're gonna have to help me with this I'm like I know <laughs> it's super heavy so I haven't I haven't used it yet um, it's a little intimidating. I did try to cut a stack of cardstock on it today, but I don't know. I'm doing something wrong. So I need some advice from uh, the expert, and I will have to wait until tomorrow to get that figured out. But it should be cool. Um, I have some gorgeous cards to show you guys. I came on, I don't know, maybe a minute or two early just because I do have so much mail to share with you. I am excited to do that. And hi, Nikki. Hi, Janet. Hi, Sarah. Mary, welcome. Connie, I see you popping in there. I'm going to get started here, and I'm going to show you the mail that I got this week. Uh, let's see. I'm going to save this one because it's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, I got crazy mail. I got a swap card in the mail from Patty Skiba. Thank you so much, Patty. This is absolutely beautiful. So at our meeting, um, every month I have a meeting with my team members who are local. And last month our meeting swap challenge was to make a card using flowers with a technique. And if you can see, I don't know if you can see that or not, but Patty's technique is the, um, oh, I just had it on the tip of my tongue. I think it's the faux linen technique. Beautiful, beautiful card, Patty. Thank you so much. I'm just gonna set these over here so I can keep going. And then I received a card from my friend Denise. Denise just did a Facebook party with me. And it was wonderful. Um, if you guys are interested in having a Facebook party, I do do Facebook parties. They're really fun. If you've been invited to any other parties on Facebook, you probably understand how they run. We set up a Facebook event, invite all of our friends to come to that event, and then I provide a bunch of content for it, meaning um, I'll share some of the, my blog posts, I'll share um, some of my videos, I actually come in and do a Facebook Live on the event page for all the guests. And um, people can ask questions, there's door prizes, lots of fun, um, and they place orders using a host code, just like the host code that I provide you with. Um, and you, you place an order with a host code, and then the hostess, whoever's uh, hosting the Facebook party is the one who gets to claim all the hostess benefits. So they're really, really fun. If anybody's interested in doing that, you can contact me with a private message or you can email me and I'd be happy to set that up. But Denise was thanking me for her Facebook live, or not live, her Facebook party. We had a lot of fun in there. And Denise got to get a lot of free product because she hosted the event. I also got a card from Trudy Barker. Trudy, this is beautiful. This is the Dutch Fold. Isn't that gorgeous? Such a fun, um, fun fold. And she was thanking me for um, sharing the Painted Seasons link with her. And that was a stamp set bundle that, well, you can still get it. It's a celebration bundle. 
And um, when you order that from me, I have a tutorial that uses the Painted Seasons bundle that I share with you as a thank you for ordering that from me. And then I got this beautiful card from Cindy Kittner. Cindy, I just love this layout and I am going to be using it. This is the Botanical Butterfly Designer Series paper that you can get free with your $50 order. And this is one of the butterflies that she just cut out and put on the front. And oh my gosh, she was so sweet. Um, she's thanking me for some dyes and for all of everything that I do, the Facebook live classes, the videos. Um, she was just so very gracious and sweet. I love, love, love this card. So thank you so much, Cindy. Then I received a card from Claudia. Oh, I don't know how to say your last name, Claudia. Padone. I hope that's right. Um, Claudia is from Burton, Michigan, and look at how cute this is. It opens up here. Isn't that sweet? And um, it, again, another thank you card. I love this using the, um, I don't know if this is the varied vases or the vivid vases. We have two stamp sets that go with our vase builder punch, but super, super pretty. And then I received this jewel. Let's see, we've got Judy Brown. Judy is one of my local customers, and look at this gorgeous card that she made. I'm going to tip it up so you can see what's happening here. How about if I turn it this way, turn it that way. Isn't this pretty? And it's just got the little message here, and it says, Happy Spring from Judy Brown. Super, super pretty. I love this, Judy. Gorgeous card. Maybe I'll show you guys how to make one of those um, on my next Facebook Live. Oh, and then I received this gorgeous card from my mom. <laughs> and um, it's funny because all the cards my mom has, I give to her. <laughs> so she wanted to thanks, um, thank me for taking her along on her vacation for both Steve and I. It was absolutely the best. So you're welcome, Mom. And um, I know my mom is not watching tonight because I think one of her favorite programs is on. And what is that show called that she likes to watch? Let me find it here. Um, God Friended Me. She likes that show, and I've watched it a few times, too. It is pretty good. And then I wanted to share. So this is kind of a cute little thing. Um, my friend and customer, Ruth Miller, forgot to bring my the Valentine card she made me last month to our stamp club because I meet with her once a month. And so she said, on it, I was going to give it to you anyways. And you know what? I love that because no matter when the card comes, it's always wonderful to have, isn't it? And look at how sweet that is. Just a really, really pretty card. So I love Valentine's cards no matter when they get to me. Absolutely perfect. Okay, then, oh, I got a wedding invitation. Check this out. This is our barn door bundle, and the wedding invitation is printed on the inside. And this is for one of my good friends, Julie. Her daughter is getting married, and she's actually, well, this isn't the wedding invitation. This is the shower invitation. She's getting married the same day Haley's getting married, and Haley and her daughter, Jamie, graduated high school together and played soccer together. So it's really funny that they're both getting married on the same day. And um, I'm a little sad because I won't be able to go to Jamie's wedding because I have to go to Haley's wedding, right? <laughs> and then I got another card from um, my good friend and customer, Sue Molden. And look at this. This is a sticker and it's so, so pretty. And this is a congratulations. She says, you are Queen Kelly. 15 year anniversary, Celeb celebrate or hear you roar. So she was sending me a congratulations on my 15 years with Stampin' Up! And I thought that was super sweet. Then I've got this card that I have to show you. Um, this is from Kathy Smith. And Kathy's card is beautiful. I love this stamp set. It's just so pretty. Kathy says, I wanted, I just wanted to thank you for all the effort you put into your videos on Facebook Live. I enjoy them so much. Um, 
She prays that God will bless me and my family and my business. And here's what Kathy did. You guys know how sometimes I can't remember the name of the punches, especially the classic label punch gives me trouble almost every time. Kathy made labels for me for all of my punches. Isn't that just the sweetest thing? Because those are the things that I don't take time to do because I'm so darn busy. And you all are busy. We're all busy people, right? But she made me labels for my punches and I can't tell you how sweet that was and how much I really, really appreciate that. So Kathy, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I will take the time to get those on my punches so I am not so discombobulated all the time when I can't remember the name of a punch. I so appreciate it. And then last but not least, hang on, I got something in my eye, probably a piece of hair. I received a beautiful card in the mail with a gift this week. This is from um, my good friend and associate Rhonda Wade. And look at how neat that is. I train with Rhonda. If you're a Stamping Up demonstrator and you would like to grow your business, um, there's no better way to do that than to train with Rhonda Wade. She's the best and I absolutely adore her. I also received, let's see, this little gift bag. I'm trying to get it back together here. Look at how cute that tag is, right? Little gift bag and inside the gift bag is a bracelet that has um, um, a little um, imprinted disc on it. How about that? And it says, oh my gosh, hang on, let me find some glasses. Oh, you guys want to see my new glasses? New glasses, they're kind of crooked on my face because I think I have one ear taller than the other. But here's my new glasses. And this says, you were given the life, hang on. Oh, I'm so embarrassed that I can't read this. I read it earlier today, but I think I had some different glasses on. You were given this life because you are strong enough to live it. Isn't that cool? I absolutely adore this bracelet. Oh, and look, it just gets bigger and smaller so you can put it on. I'm going to I'm going to put it on. Whoops. First, I'm going to throw it on the floor, but now I'm going to put it on. There we go. Isn't that cool? I just, I think this is the neatest thing. And of course, you can put more charms, charms on it if you want. But what a nice surprise in the mail. Yes, I love this charm too. Um, <laughs> Elaine says her glasses always look lopsided too. I really do. Uh, this, no, this ear is higher than the other. So my glasses are like this. I have to take them in and get them um, straightened out. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, big girl problems, right? Okay, um, please make sure you're sharing my video. I really appreciate it when you do that. I had a little challenge last week that if we, I had more than 100 shares on my Facebook Live from last Sunday. Hang on, still something in my eye here. Oh, and my glasses are really crooked that I would give away a three-month prepaid paper pumpkin subscription. And I am happy to say that we had way more than 100 shares. We had 189 shares. So um, that's pretty amazing, and I want to thank you guys so much for that. I drew names out of everybody that shared the video and our big winner for the three-month Paper Pumpkin subscription is Jan Karstensen from Tomahawk, Wisconsin. Yay, Janny! I'm so excited. I was, I was really excited to see Janny's name come up on there. I don't think she is a current Paper Pumpkin subscriber. I didn't have time to really look in my system to see, but I don't think she is. And I know that she's going to love these kits. So... Um, thank you guys so much for everybody that shared. I really appreciate it. And congratulations, Janny, um, for winning the three-month prepaid paper pumpkin subscription. Boy, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Okay. Um, I have... 
minimal announcements this week. I do have some more things to give away. Um, I think what I'll do is that giveaway worked so good that I am going to do a, another one. If we get over 150 shares, I'm writing this down so I don't forget, I am going to give away one of my online classes. And when I do that, the person will be able to pick when I draw the winner, then I'll find out which online class you would like, and I'll give that away. That has a $20 value, so that's a pretty valuable thing also. Okay, um, we only have one week of celebration left. Can you guys believe it? Only one week. Uh, next Sunday is March 31st. It is the last day for celebration, and... Um, I'm going to miss celebration. I love the fact that you guys get such a hearty gift for every $50 or every $100 that you place. And the fun thing about all the products during cel celebration is that demonstrators are making stuff like crazy with all those products, right? Like, for example, this beautiful card. Like, this is so, so pretty. Um, I forgot to mention that she used the rectangle framelits on this little, um, it reminds me of a napkin coming over the side of a, a, a table. It's just so precise and pretty. But she used those rectangle framelits to make this card. But the paper and the butterfly are both from the celebration paper. And the fun thing about celebration is once you have those celebration products, whether it's the frog stamp set or the buy the bay stamp set or the home to roof stamp set, you can find a gazillion ideas to use with those items because so many demonstrators all around the world are watching you um, and they're making tons and tons of stuff with these products to share with you. So the neat thing about Celebration is the concentration is on those products and you've got thousands of people making things with them to share. So I love that. I love when we have like a pre-order. Speaking of which, um, I think uh, around May 1st, I don't know exactly what the date is yet, but around May 1st, um, Stampin' Up's annual catalog pre-order will begin. Demonstrators can get their hands on that new catalog by attending the on-stage event all around the world actually. I'll be at one in a couple weeks here in Minneapolis and we're going to get that new annual catalog. So that's something that's super exciting for us because we can't wait to see that, right? But the other thing is, is that all um, demonstrators, discount shoppers, business builders, doesn't matter. Once you buy that kit, whether you're going to be a discount shopper or a business builder, you're considered a demonstrator. We get to get our hands on that at the beginning of May. And we also get to pre-order out of the annual catalog because Stampin' Up! wants to give us a good month to start making things with the new products so that when that catalog goes live on June 3rd or 4th, that we have things to share with you already. So, um, yeah, Trudy said Pinterest is flooded with SAB projects, and it is flooded, and that's why, because so many demonstrators are concentrating on making projects with those products. So anyways, if you there's still time for you to get $175 worth of product in your discount shopper kit for $99, and you will get to pre-order out of that new annual catalog at the beginning of May. And that's just one of the great things that we get to do. So, <laughs> Steve is in the garage. <laughs> Twyla says her husband is in the garage too. So if you haven't joined my team as a discount shopper yet, and you are a um, pretty good shopper with Stamping Up with me, you need to join my team because you'll get a 20% discount on your future orders, and you get a, a whole bunch $75 worth of free stuff, plus you get a paper pumpkin kit, plus you get a quarterly full-color uh, magazine, plus you get access to me. Um, I will train you in whatever you need training in. If you want to be a discount shopper, I will train you how to place your discount shopper orders. Um, you get flex points. Everybody earns those. Discount shoppers, business builders, doesn't matter. But there's a ton of benefits that go with being 
on my team and a discount shopper. And um, I'll tell you, when I see orders coming in that are over $150, I kind of go, oh, I wish they would have ordered that discount shopper kit because it is the best benefit for you. Um, you get the discount on future orders. You get $75 free. There's no shipping on it. So if you have any questions about it, if you go to my blog, www.astampabub.com, down in um, in the right-hand column, you just look for a $99 kit. And thank you, Karen. Karen is on my team. She just said, Kelly is always there to answer your questions, and I am. I recently started doing a Facebook Live question and answer session with me every Tuesday morning for my team members. So um, that's a lot of fun. It's something you can watch live or you can watch later, but it answers a lot of questions that people might have. So if anybody's interested in that, if you have any other questions, let me know. Go to my blog, look for a $99 kit. Almost every single question you have, I've addressed there. There's a video telling you some more, you know, all the little details. And um, there are no strings attached to our kit. No strings. None at all. Sylvia is asking, why do they need a social security number? You do need a social security number to order your kit. And the reason is that Stampin' Up! If you decide to do this as a business, Stampin' Up! must have your social security card or number so that they can send you a 1099. I'm considered a um, independent contractor with Stampin' Up! I'm an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And your income needs to be reported if you are going to run this as a business. Now, if you're going to just be a discount shopper, that'll never happen to you. You don't need to worry about it. Um, I have other people who say, I don't want to give my social security number on my computer or I don't want it to be online. Guess what? The Social Security Administration is online. You're already there. Your social security is already online. So if that's your fear, it's already there. Um, and if you're not going to make a business out of it, it doesn't matter. Nothing will ever come of it. I have most of the members on my team are discount shoppers. And um, we've not ever had a problem with a discount shopper getting a 1099 because you don't make an income. You're just getting a discount on your products. There's a huge difference. So that's the reason for the um, Social Security number. You can turn it into a business. I've also had lots of discount shoppers start doing a business. And again, Stampin' Up! was smart in getting that Social Security number because now once they start earning enough income that they're going to get a 1099. Yeah, your income has, Ingrid said, your income has to be over $6,500. I don't know if that number is correct or not. I trust Ingrid. But it's a huge number. And you're not going to earn an income. You're going to get a 20% discount. So you're never going to have any issues. Anyways, that was a great question. Thank you for posing that because I do have people who are like, whoa. Why do you need my social security number? That's why, because you can turn it into a business and I've had many of my discount shoppers do that, but you don't have to. So, enough about that. Um, share my video, click on that like button, you guys. You can click that like button right now. <clears throat> Cynthia says she's been a discount shopper for six years and she's never had a problem. Exactly, I have had discount shoppers on my team for I believe 13 years. Like the same ones. They're still with me. They love being on my team and they have not ever had a problem. So, and somebody just said, are those new glasses? Yeah, they're weird because they're crooked. Um, they keep bugging me. So I need to stop looking at myself. <laughs> the, I've got a lot of questions coming in about the discount shopper kit. Is there a quota? Yeah, it's $300 a quarter. Um, if you don't meet that $300, no big deal. You can still continue to order product from me. I won't feel bad about you. I won't go, oh, geez, that Susie, she didn't meet her quotas. It, it's nothing. It means nothing. Um, like, there's no animosity. How about that? It means a lot. There, I shouldn't say it. it means nothing. There's no animosity. So just know that, no, it's not $4,000 a year. No, it's $300 a quarter. And if you don't meet it, nothing happens. So yeah, you just aren't active anymore. You don't get the 20% discount on your orders, but you can continue to order through me. I have a lot of people who do that. They order the kit, 
they do some orders at 20% and then they decide that they've had enough. They've got enough stuff and then they stop ordering. They drop, they continue to order from me until they feel like they've got enough stuff they need again and they order the kit again. Um, a lot of people stick with me. I have a very high retention rate for my team members because we're a lot of fun. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Rachel Ann, um, you were given, what, the $3,000 or $4,000 number from your upline? Um, if that's the case, she's not, it's incorrect. That's not correct. And, um, yeah. Yeah, somebody just said they've been a discount shopper for only a month and they've already hit their 300. Kay, yes, Kay, you have. I know, but think about how much money you're saving now. Okay, I'm going to put away my little notes. Oh, I'm not putting away my notes. We have prizes to give away. I have the prizes right behind me. Okay, from last week for um, commenting, I did a drawing. And our winner of the Frosted Flower Embellishments is Mary Olson of Omro, Wisconsin. Congratulations, Mary. I think I saw your name on here. <clears throat> Next, we had Anne, and Anne, I don't know how to say your last name, D'Aquisto, Anne D'Aquisto from Grafton, Wisconsin. You're getting a new Simply Chamois. If you don't have one of these, you're going to love it, and if you do have one, it's always good to have an extra one. So congratulations to you on that one, Anne. I've already got mailers ready to roll, too, for this stuff, so I'm kind of a little bit ahead of the game. And then um, that was for sharing the, um, my video. And then last but not least is Susan Fonder of Cascade, Wisconsin is getting the Vibrant Vases stamp set. We're going to be making a really fun card with this tonight. So, um, And that was for placing an order with me. So congratulations. Yes, yeah, Steve is saying Mary rocks. Mary sent cookies home with Steve. And guess what, Mary? Steve ate all of them. I did not touch them. I just want you to know that. And he loved them. Mary's cooking is always delicious. Okay, now I think I am ready to turn myself around. Jennifer says, hi, Jennifer Watson. Um, says she loves the chamois. I know. I have chamois all over the place. Mine does not look as pristine. Let's pull this back out here. Here's, here's a new chamois. Here's Kelly's chamois. Yeah. Love it. It is the best, 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 best cleaning tool. Okay, we're going to turn this. Let me move my um, laptop over and we're going to turn the camera around. Well, I think I'll stick with you for just, oh no, I'm going to show you this. I got to show you something. Oh, let me move all this stuff out of the way though before I flip you around. Okay, we're ready to flip. If you get motion sickness, please close your eyes. I will let you know when you can open them again. But we have to do some moving here. And I don't want anybody throwing up because there's no throwing up on the Facebook Live. <laughs> Hang on just a second. Close your eyes. And we're going to have to flip around our mirroring. So there we go. That's looking good. Okay, I think we're good. I do have my phone plugged in for all my people who always help me out with those types of things. Thank you so much. Bless your heart. I certainly do appreciate it. But I do have it plugged in already. And guess what I have here? I hope this isn't shining too much. This is the newest paper pumpkin kit. And I just want to show this to you because paper pumpkin is one of my favorite things to arrive in the mail every month. It comes wrapped up. Hang on a second. I'm going to pull this stuff out of the way. Comes wrapped up in this beautiful Tiffany-like tissue paper. So everything is in here and when you open it up you really do feel like you've got just the most wonderful gift. Just like when you buy something from Tiffany's. Um, is, that, is that right? Tiffany's? Yeah, I think it's Tiffany's. You guys tell me if I'm wrong. I think that's right. Um, so here's this month's kit. Check this out. So we've got a pop-up on the inside of these cards. And I wanted to show this to you because this is just how wonderful Stampin' Up's kits are. Here's the outside of the cards. We've got 
we've got these, we've got the gray stripes, okay? So this is already actually scored for you. I'll be working with my paper pumpkin kit probably after I'm done tonight because I have a blog hop. I belong to a paper pumpkin blog hop where we share alternate ideas with you. And I also belong to a couple virtual groups. So when you order paper pumpkin from me, it allows you to get 15 extra alternate ideas using that month's kit. And that is super, super fun. It's a big challenge for me to make alternate ideas. I love doing it. And then here's the pop-up part of the card. So all of these are already die cut. And what you do, oops, you pull this. I'm gonna fold this this way. Fold this this way if I can get a hold of it. Here we go. Oops, there we go. Fold this this way and crease that here. And yep, that's how it goes. Okay, so we're gonna hang on a second. I'm gonna fold all of these down. Here we go. I haven't done this one yet. So this is my first time playing with it. I opened it up to see it and to drool over it. There we go. There is our pop-up on the inside. Now all of these cards are gonna have this cool pop-up on the inside. And I think there are eight cards in this kit. And I'm just going to leave that in there and we'll put this all away so I don't lose any of my bits and pieces. Look at the envelopes are lined for us. We have little banners that are all die cut. Um, here's the other pop-up. So this also pops right out of here. We've got some die cut adhesive. Are these adhesive? I don't Some die cut candles that go on there. Look at it's already got the strip of um, tear and tape on it too. So that's how cool these kits are. Look at that. Lined envelopes. And then we've got all of these. These are also already die cut. So all you do is pop them out of here and adorn your card with them. We also have these tags, these banners, whole bunch of them, and the instructions. Oh, and what is this? Oh, look at dimensionals, mini dimensionals, mini glue dots, and some more tear and tape. Poppy Parade ink spot. And then in each kit are all the directions so you know what Stampin' Up! intends for you to do with it. The cool part is, is that they put out a video every month showing you exactly what you need to do with that kit too. And look at my nail has yellow or something on it. Somebody said they loved my nails before. Thank you. Look at I, I got brown ink all over that one. Sorry you guys, they're not dirty, they're stained. Ooh, I'm going to have to do something about that. I was just sitting here and I'm like, oh my goodness, what's going on with my nail? Here is the stamp set. Let's see, I'm going to put some white behind it. Look at that. Polka dot numbers and a balloon. And then it says you've got the ST, the TH, the ND, the number, and the RD for fourth, um, um, third, second, all that. That was one stamp set. This was our sixth birthday anniversary, or our sixth birthday for um, paper pumpkin. So they gave us two stamp sets this month. I advertise that a lot. And then here's some beautiful confetti, a little party hat, a polka dot candle, and all these greetings in here. My goodness. All this for, I think it's around $20 a month, you guys. So paper pumpkin kit. Again, you get at least 15 alternate ideas that I send you. Um, pictures, dimensions, and written instructions with your Paper Pumpkin subscription from me. So if you have like been on the fence about Paper Pumpkin, give it a try. I think you'll love it. And again, if, if what comes in the kit, it's like, nah, I don't know if I really like that. You've got 15 more ideas that I guarantee you will like using the kit. Plus you get a stamp set, two stamp sets in this one, and an ink spot that you can keep forever. And that's really cool. All right, I think I am going to bring in this card first. And Kay says, does that work with the number die cuts? Kay, I'm not sure. Um, 
If you got the paper pumpkin kit, you can look at it and try it out. Um, if you didn't get this particular kit, you can't get it. Like you can, the next kit that you would be signing up for is the April kit. March is over and they don't backdate those and sell them again. So, all right, I am going to be using the Let It Ride stamp set. This has been in my library here for a while. I absolutely love it and I actually got to play with it. So I was pretty excited about that. And I've got a really cool technique to show you using this stamp set. I was excited to see horses and I was really excited to see that these horses are so very well drawn. Like they are really, our art team at Stampin' Up did a phenomenal job on these. I absolutely love that they look real. Now don't forget, if you need to order any of these supplies, I'd love to earn your business. You can use this monthly host code and you can go right to this, <clears throat> my blog, where you'll find an online ordering button in the right hand column. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me because I know sometimes if you've never placed an order online, um, it might be a little confusing. So don't hesitate to ask me because I'm always willing to help with that. Yeah, I think the, the um, I don't know that those numbers will fit with the number dies that are retired. So, okay, I'm trying to keep up here. Do you know the reason as to why Paper Pumpkin is only available in America and Canada? Um, I do not. I do not know the answer to that. Um, that's a good question for Stampin' Up! And you can always feel free to call them and ask them. I do know that it's not available in other countries, but I'm not sure why. And it may be, it may have something to do with the logistics of holiday stuff. Um, like uh, other countries don't celebrate certain holidays that we do here in the U.S. But I'm not really sure, but that's a great question for Stampin' Up! Okay, so... I'm excited about this card. I think you're really going to like it. I decided to use an early espresso card base. This is a five and a half by eight and a half. And I'm going to score, or um, I'm not going to score it. I'm going to fold it and burnish it. And this is a great color for um, a horse card, I thought. And then I've got a layer for the inside. And this inside layer is four by five and a quarter. And that's very vanilla. And then I decided to bring in the Wood Textures Designer Series paper. And let me see, where did I put? Here's my pack. So I've used most of this, but this Wood Texture paper, you guys, has been around for a while. If you have never um, ordered any of it, I, I really do encourage you to give it a try. This is phenomenal for your man cards, but it's also great for all kinds of cards. I've made baby cards out of this wood grain, and they are just so very charming. So this layer is going to be, again, four by five and a quarter, same as the vanilla. And then I've got another piece of early espresso that is four and seven eighths by three and five eighths. Very vanilla that's three and a half by four and three quarters. And then I've got a scrap left over from um, another thing that I cut out. So I'm going to bring in my piercing mat. For those of you that may be new to me, this is our paper piercing mat. You can find it in my online store just by typing in paper piercing mat. And I like to cover it with a piece of printer paper, and I just tape it back here. So I'm not stamping all over my mat, but it gives you a good surface to do your stamping on. It's pretty firm, but yet it's got enough cushion that if you ever have any of your bigger photopolymer stamps, like big photopolymer, the clear rubber, if, you're, if you can't get them to stamp good on a hard surface, the reason is you need a little bit of cushion. So you need to use one of these mats, and they work really good for that. Okay, I've got early espresso ink here. And I'm going to bring in this running horse. So this is our cool technique. And I'm just going to stamp my horse pretty close. This is a smaller of the two vanilla pieces. All the dimensions for all of these 
will be posted above the video as soon as I'm done and I post it to my Facebook page. You can always go back and um, you'll see a little bit of wording and then it'll say see more or something like that. You click on that see more and it's going to drop down to all the dimensions for all of this stuff. Is Janny on here? Did I just see Janny's name on here? I thought I did. Jan, you won a three-month subscription to Paper Pumpkin for sharing my video last week. Woohoo! I'm so excited for you. Okay, here we go. Kind of close to the bottom, kind of close to the right side. We're going to stamp once. Then we're going to move it over and stamp it again and move it over and stamp it again. And you get this um, succession of motion. And that's what this technique is called. It's a motion technique. And you can do it with anything that moves, like bicycles or if you have a running puppy dog or a jumping frog or um, a truck. You can do it with a car, with a truck. It's just a really cool thing. And it gives you a second and third generation of ink. Now, the rest of the card is kind of a lot of the fun part too because, let's see, where did, oh, I'm using the rectangle framelits here and I am going to cut out my rectangle. And I think I'll just bring my big shot in here. I didn't do this ahead of time. On my cutting plate. Okay, move this out of there. Somebody asked me the other day if I have cardstock that is all cut up and ready to go, and I only cut up Whisper White and sometimes very vanilla cardstock and have like front panels or inside panels at my fingertips. Now that I've got my big paper cutter, I'll probably do a little more of that. But yeah, that was a good question. Okay, so here is our rectangle. Let me get this out of here. Ah, there we go. And this is the, from the rectangle stitched framelit. Like you get, I don't know how many are in here. A lot. <laughs> There's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 of these and it does that little stitch around the edge that makes it so cool. It also puts a stitch around what's left over. So if I had made this out of, you know, cut this out of a bigger piece, I would have like a hole in here that's also decorated to use on something. So let me put this away because remember I had lost one of these. Yeah. And I don't want to go through that fiasco again. For those of you that might have missed it, I did find it. Yay me! Um, it was in a pack of cards that I had cut up and ready to make. So I did find it, thank goodness. Okay, we're going to come in here. We're going to do just a little bit of embossing. I've got a Versamark ink pad here. And I've got the greeting that says, Live as if someone left the gate open. And I love this greeting. As a matter of fact... This whole stamp set has some really good greetings. Take life by the reins, go for it, let it ride for you, and then the one that we're using. We're going to take our embossing buddy, and I am going to make sure I get my chalk on here so that my embossing powder will only stick to the Versamark ink. I'm going to stamp this kind of over to the left side of my rectangle. And I've got a piece of paper here. Let's close that up. I always recommend close that up. If you spill embossing powder in there, it's not pretty, people. Ask me. I've done it many times. You can't get it out of ink pads. So I've got that right on here. That looks great. Is that embossing powder? No, that's part of the wood grain. I'm like, why are there dots on there? That's part of my wood grain paper. Okay, so once you have your powder on there, then you need to hit it with your heat tool. And let me take a look around, oh, here we go. Okay, so um, earlier today when I was making these cards, I just take my pokey tool and hold it on here while I heat set it so it doesn't run away from me. And that's a good way to just hold it down. 
but I've already got one made because you guys know how I operate, right? <laughs> so I've got this made. The one thing that I didn't like about it is the white embossing powder with my vanilla cardstock. I, I didn't like the way that white looked on there. It was just something that bugged me. So I started playing with my Stampin' Blend markers and I am excited to tell you that the ivory, this is the ivory one, will tone down this white. And I am just coloring right over my embossed words. And now my words are more like vanilla instead of that stark white. Ah! Yay, so thought that was pretty cool. Then, let's see. I'm gonna take some dimensionals and put them on the back of this layer. And we, I think we can, oh, we've got a little bit more stamping to do, hang on. I'm gonna take the horse head And I'm gonna come in and put that right down here in the corner. I love, the, like that's a really good drawing. I guess, you know what, what really caught my eye with this whole stamp set is as a child, I used to draw horses and I got pretty good at it. Like this horse head is a really good drawing and it's it looks real to me. And that's why I really love this. I used to draw horses all the time. Um, I grew up, I lived in the city till I was about 11, and we still had horses. We boarded them at a stable. And then um, when we moved back to Wisconsin, we moved out in the country where we could keep our horses at home. So that was kind of nice. But yeah, I've, I don't have horses anymore because I do live in the city. Hang on, I got a glue glob there. Oh, there it is. Hang on, get rid of that. But anyways, that's why I really loved this stamp set because those those horse heads are just so very nicely done. Our artists did very good on them. Okay, and then I'm going to take this layer and put it right here. And then we're gonna oops, pop the back off of these. Oops, it's stuck to my fingernail. There we go. And I'm gonna set this right in here on the side. And then I have one more thing. Once we get this in, I had a whole bunch of ideas in my head for this. I think coming up on my blog soon, probably for my Wednesday tip video, I've got another technique to do and use this stamp set with. So I hope if you follow me, you can go right to my blog, the right hand column, there's gonna be a little blank there for you to subscribe to it. You wanna do that because I've got another really neat technique that I'm going to share that's perfect for the stamp set or any masculine stamp set. Okay, did you guys see my scissors? Mm, here they are. They fell out of my little Mexican cup. Okay, I'm just gonna cut a little piece of our um, linen thread. Now our linen thread comes on a round spool now, but as you can see, I've still got some that is on the card. And one of the things about the cards is it leaves these kinks where it wraps around the edges, and I don't like those. So what I like to do is take my bone folder, just like your curling ribbon, and just pull it through there, and it will get rid of those kinks from the edge of this. So there's your fabulous tip for the day. <laughs> okay, I've got one of our reinker bottles here, and I'm just gonna lay that little piece of linen thread down here. And now I'm gonna wrap this around my bottle six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're gonna tie, whoops, hang on, I just lost it. We're gonna, it's round. <laughs> so it kind of got away from me here. We're gonna tie this little piece in, in a double knot. I've been so fumbly the last couple days. Like yesterday, we went to a baby shower. 
my um, stepson's wife is having a baby in a couple months. So we drove south of Madison. If anybody knows where Blanchardville is. And we went to a baby shower yesterday. And I kid you not, I was dropping everything. Now, I'm just going to cut off these little... Oh, maybe I'll leave that one on there. Hang on. Let's see. I'm going to cut this off. Now you're just going to pull this off of your bottle. And we have this perfect little lasso. Okay? Um, mini glue dots. Here they are. And that's what I'm going to use to put it on there. So we drove to Blanchardville, even though Friday I had just driven through there on my way home from Iowa. <laughs> yep, I was all over the place in the last couple of days. But I was really dropping everything. Like everything I touched I would drop. And it was nothing horrible happened. Like it wasn't anything that broke. But it was just really fumbly yesterday. <gasps> what do you guys think of that? Isn't that cool? I love the linen thread because it is the perfect lasso. Oh, Vicki, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> not pregnant. Not me. Um, yes, Diana, I started with this horse and then stamped again and again. And as soon as we're done with this video, as soon as we're finished tonight, this will post to my Facebook page and you can rewatch it. You can fast forward, rewind, pause it so you can see what's going on. But this is a motion technique that makes it look like the horse is running, right? Yeah, cool. Okay, I'm going to let this sit right here while I put this stuff away so we can get on to our next card. And let me get this in here first. There we go. All the stuff's away. Yeah, Cindy, I know. Um, Cindy said she's going to take another look at this set. The card is very striking. And I have to tell you, too, it's not going to be the last thing you see coming from me because I'm pretty sure I'm going to do um, another technique this this coming week or maybe next Wednesday. Either this Wednesday or next Wednesday. I might have something on my agenda already for this Wednesday, but um, I will be making something else with it also. It's just a really pretty stamp set. Great for man cards. I could see using the um the set for it's very serene looking i could see using it for a bunch of different things but sympathy get well and and you know um live as if someone left the gate open go for it i love that and i love being able to send cards to my friends when they might need that extra encouragement to do something that they're a little iffy about you know okay next i have oh I've got a cute one for you. Okay, let me, I hate to set that down where it glares at you. I'm gonna bring in all the goodies for this. Oh, and I know I'll need my big shot again too. So you guys are getting a lot of big shot action tonight that I'm showing you. <laughs> okay, I have um, powder pink, petal pink and smoky slate. Ink. I'm going to be using the More Than Words stamp set. And if you recall, this is also um, has a punch that matches it called the Story Label Punch. And what else? We have the Four Seasons Framelit dies that are still available also. And this is part of our celebration coordination promotion. So... Um, when you, if you go to order this, you're going to have to look it up by the name, more than words, story label, punch, four seasons, framelits, um, because there's no, uh, it's not in any of our books. I guess that's a good way to put it. Okay. Here we go. We are going to, hang on a second. I got to keep everything together. Or everything is a disaster. <laughs> We're going to be using some more wood texture, designer series paper, and then I've got some of our framelits here, and here we go. Oh, that got kind of crinkled, but I think it'll be okay. All right, let's talk about measurements. 
I've got a tall card. This is four and a quarter by 11. I've already scored it at five and a half. Oh, you guys, I didn't give you my update on my weight loss. Well, I didn't do that because I didn't lose any more weight. <laughs> um, I don't remember what the last number was that I told you, but I'm, I'm down a total of 18 pounds. And um, I'm very thrilled with that, but I didn't lose any more weight. And I'll tell you, when you go places, that's when I find that I'm having trouble staying on track, right? Like I went to a baby shower yesterday, and of course, they had all the amazing food. And um, then I um, went to Iowa for a few days, and oh, yeah. So, anyways, I'm looking at my comments here. Okay. Oh, Noreen said 17 pounds was last week, so I'm up to 18 now. Thank you guys so much. I just completely forgot because I'm just kind of disappointed in myself. But um, I, I didn't gain weight, and I certainly could have. But I was really good. We had we went to this little place, and I had a zombie burger, which had cheese and jalapenos on it, fire-roasted jalapenos, and I didn't eat the bun. It was delicious, but I don't know. I just didn't lose much this week. Okay, Petal Pink, Whisper White, 4 by 5 and a quarter, and also the Wood Textures, 4 by 5 and a quarter. First thing I'm going to do is bring in my Big Shot again. So thank you, thank you everybody. I always appreciate your encouragement. And um, hopefully I will have better numbers to tell you next week. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now, I am using a circle. This is from our layering circles. So you need a couple circles and the layering ovals. This one is about two and five eighths inch. No, no, no. Um, yeah, two and five eighths inch round. So I'm just giving that as kind of like, now well, that's kind of the size, okay? I'm gonna put it not in the center, but slightly down from the top, and we're just gonna cut out a circle. Ah, uh, thanks everybody. I appreciate the encouragement. Okay, now you can keep this and use it for something else. This is what we're gonna use. My big shot over here. Hang on, because I just had to pull my pants up because they were falling down. <laughs> that is a fabulous feeling, people. <laughs> and it's true. They were falling down. Okay. Um, we've got this. Now we're going to take a piece of basic black cardstock. And this just needs to be bigger than whatever... Um, hole that you punch and my basic black is three by three or so I forgot forgot to cut one for this card and I'm just going to tape this on the back you could use glue you could use whatever you want but I just happen to have scotch tape at my fingertips here so I'm going to tape that in place and then I am going to adhere that right to my card front and again, petal pink is the base that I'm using. And see how nice that wood grain goes with the pastel color? It really is quite, um, I don't know, I just like it. I think it's charming. Next thing I'm going to do is we are going to bring in our basic gray. And I, oh, hang on. I just threw my basic gray and got my punch all full of ink. So... Let's hope that's all I drop tonight. <laughs> all right, I've got a sponge here. I've also cut out a whisper white circle that is about two inches. And I'm just gonna sponge the edge with the smoky slate. Did I say basic gray before? I might have, but that's not, that's not what I meant. This is um, smoky slate, so it's our lighter of the gray colors. And I'm gonna put that right here. And then I've got two of our very small ovals, and these measure about one and three quarters inches long. I just like to give you those measurements in case um, you might have punches that punch ovals. Um, if you don't have a set of ovals or a set of circle framelits, I highly recommend them. I use these all the time. Got both of those. Then I'm gonna bring in my powder pink and I'm going to punch out a three quarter inch circle. We're gonna put a dimensional on the back of that. 
And I'm going to do that right now. And we're going to sponge this one with the powder pink. And you could honestly just use the petal pink if you wanted to, but I, I already had a sponge in powder pink, so that's why I chose that. And then I'm going to set this right here. We're going to put dimensionals on... Oh, where's my marker? Right here. I'm going to take this marker. Who knows what I'm making? It's pretty stinking cute. I saw this idea, and this idea has been going around for years, but I saw this idea um, earlier today, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so cute, I have to make one. So I changed it up just a little bit. Whoops, hang on. Look at, look at I got ink everywhere. I was going to wash the dishes earlier today. Don't tell Steve, because he usually is wash he washes all the dishes. So I could get all the ink off my fingers, but I wasn't feeling 100% earlier today. I was just feeling really, um, meh. Like, I don't know what to say. I kind of woke up with a headache, and then I was super tired late this afternoon, so I went and took a shower so I would look presentable, and um, took a little nap. And now I feel like 100%. I'm, I'm good to go now. Okay, so these are our bunny feet, you guys. How cute are these? <laughs> okay, I, I had one more thing I wanted to do the, to the front of my card. And that is use my bow jig. Now my friend Denise is going to be coming home in a couple weeks from Arizona. Her husband makes these. So if you'd like to get your hands on one, um, after April 1st, you can email me. I'm going to do one, two, three. You can email me and put bow jig in your subject line. And I will forward it to Denise and see if her husband has some more of these and she'll contact you about getting your hands on one because they're fantastic. Where's my scissors? There they are. Okay. Hang on, my thing isn't scrolling again. I don't know why it does that. It, you guys, if I missed any questions, um, yeah, bunny, yay! <laughs> So Denise asked, is SU giving up on an ink organizer because of the pegs and stackability of the new stamp pile? Denise, I don't, I don't know. I don't have any insider information on that, so I don't have an answer for you. But you know what? Um, Stampin' Up's customer service, even demonstrator, demonstrator support is the most amazing um, service. You can call them and ask them what their plans are for that. I really do not know. I'm still using my ink caddy and it's working fine for me. So I'm not, um, yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you. If they're going to come up with anything or not, not sure. <gasps> Look at that. Okay. So this is the petal pink and the silver striped Baker's Twine, and how sweet. Isn't that cute, you guys? Super, super sweet. I love this. Oh, and Beth says she's been drooling over my bow jig for so long, she finally got her husband to make one for Christmas, and she loves it. Julie, I think it's $10 with shipping is the bow jig. So um, they're $5, but then shipping is, like, so expensive. So that adds another $5. All right, next what I'm gonna do is we need a greeting for the inside and I decided to use the more than words because we have Easter in here and we have wishes. So I'm using, this is where the petal pink comes in. I'm gonna use petal pink, let me get this closed up, for my greeting and yeah, and then I also, oh, here's my Memento Black, so let's not get that confused with this. Here we go. So somebody asked me earlier today if um, you should stamp with the big wishes first or the half of wishes, and I don't think it really matters, but I usually do the big one just because it's easier for me to place it. So I'm going to stamp with my bigger one. <gasps> Perfect! And then I'm using the same color ink. And I'm stamping over top of it, and this is just going to give it that ombre look. See how good I did. Ah, oh, pretty good. Okay, oh, look, I made an edge. So, I'll show you this again. <laughs> yeah, I got edges. I can't put that in my card like that, because that's, that's not going to work for me. So, let's do it again. See? 
even Kelly gets edges from time to time. And you all knew that. <laughs> I'm human just like everybody else. I'll try this again. Let's see if I can get it lined up as good as I did before. Hang on, I'm going to have to put my head right over this. Now you could put this in your stamp -a jig for perfect placement. Oh, I did really good. I'm happy with that. Okay. What I was saying is you could put it in your stamp -a jig for perfect placement. And I have done that before too. And now here comes our Easter. And I'm using black, our memento black for that just because I think it pops a little bit more. <gasps> Isn't that pretty? I love the funky font with the bigger wishes. Okay, let me move this. Last but not least, I had a piece of, here it is. I was like, I have this strip of designer series paper from the wood textures that has been in my way the whole time I'm making the card, and now I can't find it, but I found it. Don't worry. There we go. I just like that little bit on the inside there. I'm going to, oh, that looks good. We're going to cover up this boo-boo, right? Here comes our cute little pink card. Oh, my goodness, my stomach is growling. So Steve made, um, what did he make tonight, a pork roast? He made chicken fajitas while I was gone, so I've been munching on those. And uh, he made a pork roast today and potatoes and vegetables, and I don't even know what. So what do you guys think? <gasps> Yes, D Denise says that script font is the best. I do. I love it. And I love it with the big blocky words. So this is a great little Easter card. And then I wanted to show you that I made one out of our soft sea foam. So I've got this one. And that uses petal pink. Or I'm sorry, the um, powder pink. And this uses the petal pink. Now, aren't those cute? I know, right? Okay, let's look at me clapping for myself. I know, I get excited. And um, yeah, you guys should hear me when I'm in my office by myself and I'm doing stuff like that. It's, it's, it looks a little loony, but I do get excited when I make stuff. And it's like, oh, look how cute that is, right? We should all be that excited about what we're making because it's fun. Okay, hang on, I'm having some trouble here. Get all this out of the way so that we can move on to the next one. There we go, okay. All right, the next card that I have for you, um, let's see, Susan Fonder won the Vibrant Bases card, or um, stamp set, and we are actually gonna be using that stamp set tonight with the Painted Seasons Designer Series paper. And I've got a bunch of cards to show you um, using the same layout, but different designer series papers. Because I, every once in a while I get into a groove and I just do that. And I did it not too long ago with, oh, let me bring those back in. I've got them sitting right here. Here we go. Remember these cards? I shared these on my blog, I think. Yeah, it was for a blog hop. So these are all four different um, designer series papers that are in the Painted Seasons pack. This is one of the celebration offerings you can get for free with your $50 order. You can also get the Painted Seasons stamp set with the paper for a $100 order. Um, but anyways, I made all of these, and so now I wanted to use the other side of the paper. So this is like the little mushrooms, and then we've got the flowers and the pine bows. And, oh, that's still the flowers and the pine bows and the what else? Oh, and these flowers. So now I'm using this side of all these papers for the cards that I'm going to make now. And I think you're going to, I know you're going to like these because they were designed, oh no. Oh goodness. Oh, I'm like, where's my paper? I don't have any cardstock cut. Don't worry. I totally have cardstock cut. Lots of it. Okay. Here we go. Now, Vibrant Vases also, um, there's a stamp set called Vivid Vases that goes with the Vase Builder Punch, okay? So you've got two different stamp sets that go with this punch. 
Um, this one is in the Occasions Mini Catalog. The other one is in the Annual Catalog. All right, let me see what I have here. Oh, first, I have to um, kudos out to Karen Karst. Karen, I'm pretty sure that I spoke with you earlier this evening. You are on here. I'm showing everybody how to make your cute card. So, and then I made one in each of the colors in this designer series paper. So first of all, what we have here is a card base and this is four and a quarter by five and a half. So this is actually the back of our card. And then I have a piece of, hang on a second. This is four by eight and a half and I've scored it already at three and a quarter. And then I've got, oh, this is Poppy Parade black. Another piece of black. This is two and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And don't worry, I will share all these measurements with you. This is the last card that I'm going to make. I've got some more to show you, but this is the last card I'm going to make. So as soon as I'm done with it, I will share the dimensions. Then I've got another piece of black, and this is three and three quarters by three designer series paper that is um, three and a half by two and three quarters. Let's put that together right here. We're going to just start putting these together so they're not quite as confusing for all of us. <laughs> that was meant for me too. I've got a scrap of our designer series paper two white pieces. One of them is two by three and three quarters the inside one is bigger at two and a quarter by four. And then we've got a layer to go under this front one that is also Poppy Parade. And it is, da, 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 da. let me think about this a little bit. I don't think I wrote that one down. It's gonna be in between the two. So it's two and a quarter by four. Where's my two and a quarter by four? Hang on a second. Oh, there it is, inside. Oh, no. Oh, so it's the same size as this white piece for the inside. Okay, so you'll it'll come together in just a second. I know this is confusing. All right, we are going to um, take our designer series paper and I am just going to bring my punch in and I think this is just a scrap, by the way. This is a great way to use up all those scraps that you have that you put back in the front of your designer series paper packs, right? I'm gonna take this piece that we folded and we are going to add that to the black layer. Just like this. So it opens like this, okay? This piece right here goes right here. It's kind of hard to see when it's up against that. There we go. And then this piece right here, this is a fun fold that Karen shared with me and I've had it sitting on my desk going, gosh, I just love that. I love fun folds. They're really cool. Here we go with that. Now I'm going to put some glue on the back here. Oh, my thing isn't scrolling again. It's so frustrating. Pamela said she wasn't going to buy this set, but now she's probably going to break down and get it. It is pretty cool. I mean, I have to say, I've, I've, I've enjoyed it. I've made a couple cards, two or three maybe, out of this so far. Okay, so there we have that. Now we have to do some stamping. Here's what we're going to do. We already punched out some bases. So I am going to bring in, this is Call Me Clover. Poppy Parade, and our Memento Black. And I'm going to stamp Celebrate Every Tiny Victory. And I'm going to put that right at the top of the smaller white piece. Then I'm going to come in with the bouquet of flowers. And I'm going to bring in my card, or my flower vase, just so I can see where I need this to be. Okay, we're going to put some dimensionals on the back of here. Now there's a couple really cool things that I want to share with you 
about the stamp set because one of them I wasn't even aware of until I started nosing around in here. So you have, whoops, let's keep that out of the ink, Ugh. right? Um, you have the outline flowers that I just stamped with, and then you have these flowers that are meant to color the outline flowers. Let me see if I can get this in here right. There we go, that looks good. Okay. And then the really cool part is, is this goofy looking stamp here, that's to color the leaves. I'm like, what? Because I thought, ooh, I gotta get a marker out and color these leaves, but nope, you don't. Don't worry about that little line there. That stamps right in the leaves so that they're colored now. Isn't that cool? Then I'm gonna show you the daisy one too because that's the one I didn't know it even had leaves for it. So dimensionals under this vase and see how that vase is gonna cover up my little boo-boo there. Oh, that's kind of crooked, hang on. Oh, these dimensionals, they like really take root. Let me get that off of there because that didn't, that was, it was totally crooked you guys and I can't have that. <laughs> I just can't live like that. <laughs> do you guys do that at home too? It's like, oh my gosh, that'll never work. There we go. There we go. Now it's centered. <gasps> Isn't that cute? Okay, so we're going to put that on here. That goes on the front of this panel. And then for the inside panel, I am going to take one of these other vases. I think I'll just do this one. And I'm not gonna stamp the outline of the flowers, I'm just gonna stamp the colored flowers. Does that make sense? Here we go, just like this. So that's just gonna be on the inside. Then I've got one more thing to show you with the daisy flowers. Let's move this. And then I'll show you all the other ones I made because you know, you know how I am. I got going and I couldn't stop and I just kept creating stuff and it was just so cool. <gasps> Look at that. Okay, you guys, so this is totally Karen's card. Like everything. I didn't change a thing except I um, use different paper and different colors in the greeting from the stamp set, but this was Karen's card. I just absolutely loved it. This is the one that I made with her layout. And then I've got a piece of white here because I wanted to show you the same thing goes for these cute little daisies. So I'm going to stamp that. Okay, we got that. Where's that? Let's see, I've got another base sitting here that I can actually use for this piece. So maybe I'll come up with something else. Um, then we have the daisies. And I'm going to ink those up and get those. Hang on, because i got to be over the top of this to see what I'm doing. That looks good. <gasps> Look how cute they are. And then this goopy little stamp right here, that's for the leaves for the daisies. Look at that. It fits in there perfectly. And I think I'll pop this up on a dimensional. This is just a scrap that I pulled aside, but it's so pretty. I don't know that I can throw it away. So I'm just going to... Yeah, that vase doesn't look that good, does it? Let's put a real vase in there. It was kind of um, a havesy. It wasn't a very big vase. So I'm going to do this. I like this big vase. This is my favorite one. <laughs> Do you guys have that where you have favorite ones of things? Yeah, I like this one the best. And I think I'll add a greeting to this side over here. Oh, for Pete's sakes. And I've got another layer for the front of a card. And again, this was just meant to be a scrap. And I would also, I would probably do something with the middle. Here's my Daffodil Delight. Stampin' Right marker, and I'm just going to put yellow in the middle because I'm anal like that. There we go. So I'll stamp some type of a greeting over here and make a card with this. Maybe I'll share it with you um, next week. We'll see. Okay, want to see the rest of the cards?
Okay, now is the time to start asking questions. If I missed any of your questions, because my computer was not scrolling with you tonight, I don't know why it does that sometimes, and other times I don't have a problem with it. It's just one of those internet-y things that nobody can explain that makes you crazy. I'll show you these other colors because they're so pretty. This is the Grapefruit Grove with this pattern of the Designer Series paper. This is the Call Me Clover with this pattern of the Designer Series paper. And I decided I didn't want green um, flowers, so I just used yellow, Daffodil Delight there. And here is the Pool Party one, and I used the daisies here. And then, We've got the Poppy Parade. So all four designer series papers. And honestly, I cut four of all the black layers, then four of the white layers, and four of the designer series papers. And this was so easy to cut and, and score the little middle piece to make four different colored cards. It was just fantastic. Super, super simple and easy. So... Let's bring these back in here. We've got our Vase Builder Punch with the Vibrant Vases stamp set. We've got the Bunny Butt, <laughs> the Bunny Butt card using the um, words. What's that stamp set called? You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, the More Than Words. This is only available till the end of March, this stamp set. And then we've got our horse card using the motion um, technique with the Let It Ride stamp set. This is in the Occasions mini catalog. So lots of great cards for you guys tonight. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to see if you have any questions for me. I didn't see anything pop up. Yeah, Kathy says, oh, the possibilities in that layout. I know. And um, this just really piqued my interest, Karen. It just really piqued my interest. And I thought, I need to make some of these. I also had somebody who messaged me after I showed this last week, because Karen sent me this card as a thank you. Look at how dirty I am. Um, I had somebody email me and ask me for the dimensions on it. And I did did type them up and send them to her. And um, just today I thought, you know, that card's sitting right on my desk. I need to, I need to um, make those for everybody because I, I love this. I love it. And I love the designer series paper here. And I thought this would work just perfect to make four different colored cards with that. So, okay. I don't think I've, I'm looking for questions. Oh, thank you, Trudy. Trudy says, wonderful as usual. Please don't forget to share my video. Click on that like button too. That really helps me out. Um, Cindy's asking, are the measurements on your blog? I will post this on my blog either Monday or Tuesday, but I will put the measurements into our Facebook Live, right above the Facebook Live video as soon as we're done here. I will post the measurements in there. Um, I do have to tell you that with these four different colors, I just call the the different color colors the solid color because you can use whatever color you want. But I, I did Poppy Parade, Call Me, Clover, Grapefruit Grove, and Pool Party. But I'm just going to call it the solid color because there's so many different ones. Um, so that's a great question. Uh, Kay, did I talk about my new cutter? The only thing I talked about my new cutter was I said that I have it in the kitchen. I tried to use it today. I couldn't get it to work. Um, there's a lot of safety features on it because you could like cut your whole hand off. <laughs> so I have all my fingers. Um, so I'm sure I'm just doing something wrong. I couldn't get it to cut. <laughs> we don't want Kelly without fingers or a hand, quite frankly. Um, but I need to talk to my friend Dina and see what I'm doing wrong, and then I'll get it figured out so I can use it. Um, it's probably not something you're going to see. It's one of those tools that stays in the background. Um, I don't sell it, so I'm not going to promote it. I only promote what I sell, which is these things and the paper cutter that we have. 
um, but I need a paper cutter on an industrial level if I'm going to be doing um, card kits in the mail, which is what I'm proposing to do. So watch for that coming out in the near future. I'm going to add that to my um, monthly schedule and we'll see how it goes. But I think you'll love it. It's a lot of fun to do, to get kits in the mail. Um, so Gilmore says the bunny cards are adorable. Did you use a little white pom-pom? I did not. I just sponged my little bunny tails um, with the powder pink ink. I did not use a pom-pom. But you certainly could do that. And um, I mentioned how heavy my cards were. I told her that's because... Oh, Pamela says I had a lady the other day at work mention how heavy my cards were. I told her that's because I only use the good stuff. And you are absolutely right. If any of you out there are making cards with um, using cardstock that isn't Stampin' Up! cardstock, I highly encourage you to try Stampin' Up! cardstock. Number one, our Whisper White is the best surface to stamp on, hands down, across the board, across the world. Um, it is well worth the, whatever it costs, $9.75 for 70 sheets. What's 70 times 40? You can get 240 card fronts out of that. I also highly recommend our Whisper White and our Very Vanilla Thick for our card bases because you do need something a little more substantial to hold those cards together. Um, <laughs> Mary says, don't do what I did with the machine, not fun getting stitched or not using your finger for six weeks. No, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to... Uh, this paper cutter doesn't work without all the safety um, mechanisms in place. So... I'm pretty, I should be okay, Mary, but thank you. <laughs> what is the weight of our cardstock? I think, Donna, it's 80 pounds. I don't quote me on that, but that just rings a bell in my mind um, that our cardstock is 80 pounds. I know that one time I had a coupon to archivers to get free cardstock. I could get so many sheets of free cardstock just for going into the store. And I went in there, and every single piece, I thought, well, I'll just go get black because black is black, right? Black cardstock is black cardstock. That'll work perfect. And I went in and I I picked up a piece of black cardstock and it was so flimsy that I walked out without any of the free cardstock they were offering because it was just, in my mind, it was garbage. And um, that won't punch well. Um, flimsy cardstock, punches don't like flimsy cardstock. I know it'll die cut fine, but I just wasn't willing to downgrade my quality like that. So I'm kind of a cardstock snob <laughs> which if you're gonna be a snob it's a kind of an okay snob to be right <laughs> okay I think I've answered um uh, Linda said a few little black dots under the bunny would be realistic I don't know what you mean Linda um oh like a poop <laughs> no we're not gonna do poop I will not make poop <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> Linda, I love you. All right. Um, I think we're good now. I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you have a wonderful week. Please check back with me on Wednesday. Uh, I have a couple different techniques that I've been looking at for my Wednesday tip video. If you guys don't aren't familiar with that, every Wednesday I have a tip video. Most of the time it's a short little tip on how to do something or how to ink your ink pads or you know, things like that, but um, sometimes it's a whole card. It's supposed to be just a tip video. And then I also, on my blog, share a joke of the week. And sometimes they're really hilarious, and sometimes they're corny, and sometimes you roll your eyes. <laughs> but, but I think laughter is good for the soul. And so I know that my followers that, if I forgot when I was in, I think when I was in Arizona, the week I got back, I forgot the joke in my Wednesday tip video on my blog and boy did I hear about it so it's good to know that people appreciate it and they really look forward to brightening their day with whatever corny little joke I have um, to share with them so make sure you check out my blog you can go there at www.stampabub.com you can subscribe in the right hand column just add your email address in there you're going to click go it's going to ask you if you're a robot and you're going to say that you're not and then you'll get an email and you have to open up the email from Ferd feed burner to confirm your subscription to my blog. 
If you're planning on placing an order with me, I always appreciate your orders. That's what keeps me in business and keeps these Facebook Lives and the other videos that I do for free coming to you for free. If you'd like to place an order, please use this host code. That really helps me out, and it also gives you some special perks with me. Um, have a great week, and thank you once again so much for joining me tonight. You don't know what it means to me. I'm so happy to be um, stamping with people and interacting with people on my Sunday night. I really do love it. Have a good week, and I will see you next Sunday at 7 p.m. Central Time, March 31st. It will be the last day of the month, though so that that's kind of um, interesting, right? Then we're jumping into April, where it's going to warm up, because today it wasn't very warm here. It was like, I don't know, 37, which is warmer than it has been, but holy cow, we need some warm weather. <laughs> All right, you guys, have a great week. Bye-bye.